in Colorado, the reason why I got involved in suicide prevention, and particularly in infrastructure as a senator, was the need that we were seeing in Colorado for uh, the need for solutions, the need for uh, prevention programs that we knew that were going to make sense, both physically and also help with people from dying in pain alone. As a suicide loss survivor, understood that grief and understood that pain of being a family member who had lost someone to suicide. But as a senator, I realized, oh my gosh, my constituents are coming to me. They're coming to me for uh, potential solutions, for pot potential answers, for how do I address this as a legislator? So what we did in Colorado with addressing infrastructure was that we took our little tiny office of suicide prevention and we looked at how we could build things into it that would create a foundation for things that really mattered and really worked because we didn't know if we were throwing money at things that possibly wouldn't be helping or if we were not giving enough attention to other areas. So with the Suicide Prevention Commission, we put together a public-private partnership with people from all across the state who had expertism in suicide prevention, as well as people with lived experience, people who had been either um, a member of a family who had a suicide or people who had attempted suicide and who had survived and brought in all of those experiences so that then we could look at it in a holistic manner and, uh, and look at it both financially, strategically, uh, and then also uh, emotionally. It's an emotional issue for our constituents as well. In addressing suicide prevention infrastructure, we looked at, uh, from an aerial view basically, looking at the foundation and what gaps that we had in our practices, in our approaches in Colorado, and we wanted to make sure that we weren't putting a band-aid on something that really deserved much larger than a tourniquet. Uh, and. Uh, that has been very helpful for us. Uh, examples of um, embedding people in public health, experts in public health across the state, it, with that public health lens into our communities, into our advocacy networks, into our public-private um, co collaborations, which really helped us leverage the capabilities and uh, that we all had but we weren't doing collectively together so it really created a synergy that allowed us to expand our work without expanding our budget so how do we get here we really got here through bipartisanship that was a huge element of our success in Colorado and that's because suicide prevention is not a partisan issue, it's a human issue. Everyone is concerned with safety and protection of life. And it's definitely a fiscal issue because we don't want to waste our constituents' dollars. So it's a smart investment into the area of public health. The other tip is don't do it alone. The other people around you want to help you. They are looking for ways to help you. And so don't attempt to do it alone without the experts, without those who have lived experience, without those who really see it from varying points of view and varying perspectives. So you have your public health experts, you have people across in urban and rural settings, in nonprofits, um, in fiscal institutions, you uh, philanthropic, uh, there are all kinds of people who want to help you. And so just let them. <laughs> so my third lesson in what I've been doing in Colorado has been the acting with bold humility. That's what I like to call it, which means that I am definitely acting boldly 
in not being shy about talking about suicide. Not being shy when I'm approaching other people who have the expertise in suicide prevention. Whether that means uh, people I've never heard of before, strangers, um, maybe people from another party, I don't care who they are. If they have expertism in suicide prevention, I'm gonna reach out to them. As a member of the task force that the National Suicide Prevention Resource Center put together, when we were looking at putting together the suicide prevention statewide infrastructure recommendations, I was thrilled that nationally we were drawing on the expertise of people who had already done some work, some promising practices, some promising approaches. We were putting into one document that could be given to legislators from across the country that they could use as one resource of recommendations to look at what does suicide prevention infrastructure mean? As a person who has lost someone to suicide myself, thank you. Thanks for stepping up and committing to do this work, it's important. And thank you so much for listening to your constituents who are asking for help so that their loved ones don't die alone in pain. I thank you for that, and I thank you for the commitment and the persistence that you have. It's hard, but together, and with now these tools in front of you, we'll all be able to make a difference.